Happy Sunday there, wine lovers. It's Stephanie Miskew, certified sommelier and author of the blog, The Glamorous Gourmet. And welcome to my weekly Facebook Live show, Wines of the Week. I'm here with you every Sunday at five o'clock Eastern Standard Time, sharing wonderful wines you won't want to miss. And I am so excited about today's show on this fabulous Sunday, June 10th. Yeah, Sunday, June 10th. I have a very special show and I am partnering with Cheeses of Europe on a special sponsored episode entitled Secret de Fromage. What's not to love about that? So we're going to be exploring some wonderful wines and cheeses and we are also going to be exploring some wonderful pairing principles that are really going to help you uh, bring your pairings to the next level. So I'm so excited to share all of that with you and I mean just look folks. Oh, look, I cannot tell you how hard it was not to just run away with the plate, forget the show, but you know what? I just had to share this all with you because these are some of my favorite cheeses on the planet, and I think you're going to like them too. So if you want to take a minute and uh, and let me know where you're watching from, and I would really appreciate it as I share our simple format, as those of you who have been watching for a while know, it's the same format usually every Sunday. I share four wines with you, uh, but today it's a little different because I have some amazing cheeses. But I usually like to keep the shows to about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, I know it's the weekend. I appreciate your time. And I just want to inspire you to indulge in something delicious, whether it's wine or wine and cheese. I like to bring this stuff to you. Um, and also, if if you are watching this after the live broadcast, please be sure to ask questions and leave comments as if you were watching it live. So let's see who's joining us today. And again, I appreciate you taking the time out of your Sunday. I hope you're all having a great weekend so far. And uh, <laughs> I wish I could actually share this with you, but great to see you, Oscar. Thanks so much for joining. John, oh, John's got cheese. On. Yes, I'm so happy to hear that. That's wonderful. I know, I love when you guys can kind of sip and savor along with me. And I hope that throughout today's show, if you have a favorite uh, wine and cheese pairing that you go ahead and share. That's the benefit of doing this, the whole Facebook Live thing. And I so enjoyed it but you can actually have a conversation about these things in real time. So feel free to ask away as I'm tasting through any of our wines or cheeses today. Uh, that's that's kind of what we're all about here. And thanks so much for joining. Deb, great to see you. And uh, awesome. Well, thanks to those of you who are joining us uh, right now. And um, why don't we go ahead and just jump into our tasting. And again, if you're just joining us, my name is Stephanie Miskew. I'm a certified sommelier, and on today's episode of Wines of the Week, I'm sharing Secret de Fromage. So we're exploring wine and cheese pairings today, uh, featuring delicious cheeses from Europe. So, uh, all right, so the first pairing I want to share with you, and it's going to be a little different today, today's show. The, today, the cheese is the, the star. I know normally the wine is, and uh, but today... I'm just letting the cheese take the lead because, because it deserves it. I mean, this is some pretty great stuff. So the first cheese we're going to kick off with is one that you might be familiar with and one of my personal favorites, Brie, right? What is not to love about Brie? It's uh, one of the most popular cheeses on the planet, as we know, and it is a bloomy, bloomy rind cow's milk cheese from Ile de France. It's aged at least four weeks and has a, has a very, we all know what it looks like, right? We kind of recognize it on site. It's got a very pale straw colored paste to it and, uh, and a white, very thin layer of mold as the rind. And as those of you who have been fans of it for quite some time know, you can either, the, the rind is edible, so you can either eat it or discard it that's up to you, but it's not going to hurt you if you want to go ahead and eat it. And I so t sometimes we're so <laughs> eager to get it in our mouths, we'll just we'll just eat it, and that's that's fine too. Um, and it is, but I think what we really love about this cheese is its rich, luscious, just that unctuous texture that just coats the palate. It has a mellow flavor. It's just really hard not to like this cheese, right? I mean, it's it's. It, 
hits it out of the park every time, that's for sure. And one of the things I love about the Cheeses of Europe website is they have um, little secrets de fromage on there. And the one they have about Brie, it's secret de fromage number 83, is that Brie was actually crowned the king of cheeses back in 1815. And that's something I love to highlight about European cheeses as well, because they've been making them for so long. And, and I love domestic cheeses too, but that's just something about the cheeses of Europe that you don't find, you know, everywhere. They've been making this cheese, particular cheese, since 18, the 1800s. So there's a lot of history there, there's tradition, much like the wines of Europe. There's certain, certain food products, especially cheeses, that are that way too. So I just had to kind of highlight that when I'm talking about these cheeses, because you know they're made according to certain guidelines and with an eye on tradition always. So that's very important to them. But again, as we know, uh, brie is so versatile. You can um, serve it on a cheese plate or cook with it. I like to um, always refer to one particular, I mean, I've made it since, but the first time I made this particular hors d'oeuvre, it was a baked brie. Just a brie coated in raspberry jam, covered in a puff pastry, baked in the oven, simple enough. I brought it to a party. I set it down. I went to say hi to everybody. I think I don't think I made it back for about an hour, but I literally came back to the plate I brought it on and there was nothing left. No, no, not a crumb of the puff pastry, no cracker, no nothing. It was that good. So just another, and I will actually link up that recipe in the show notes, but again, just a testament to how much we all love this cheese. So as I, as I promised at the beginning of the show, I am going to be uh, highlighting certain pairing principles uh, in conjunction with all of our featured cheeses that are really gonna help you kind of elevate your pairings. I know there's a lot of confusion out there, and it is a subjective thing. I mean, I want you, I'm not here to dictate to you what you should like, but I just wanna kind of guide you to, to discover, according to your own palate, those pairings that are really going to make your palate sing. So the two uh, pairing principles I'm going to use in conjunction with our brie are number one, you wanna pair cheese and wine with similar weight. And that pretty much goes to whether you're pairing cheese or food with wine, right? You kinda of wanna balance the weight of the items. You don't want either one kind of knocking the other one out of the park. So definitely something to keep in mind. And um, especially with brie's like cream, creamy, buttery, luscious texture, you really want a wine that's gonna mirror that. So I have a delightful Chardonnay that I'm going to pour in a minute here that's really going to be a beautiful match for the brie. Um, also, the second one that I love to drive home to folks, pair white wines with cheese. Folks, I know everyone automatically thinks red wine with cheese, but that, couldn't be farther from the truth. And while there are some great wines or great cheeses that pair with red wines, white wine is so much more versatile. If you think about it, think of tannin and oak as being components that can kind of conflict with things. So with white wine, you don't have to deal with tannin. You just might have a little bit of oak, which in this case, I think actually makes this pairing. So just something to keep in mind. So the fabulous wine I've got to pair with our brie is is such a treat. It is the Palmas Amalia Chardonnay, beautiful label from Napa Valley, California, 2015 vintage, another stellar vintage in the Napa Valley. But uh, again, this wine is a bit of a splurge at $70 a bottle, but um, the Palmas family just has such an eye on quality when it comes to their wine production. They purchased their estate in the 1990s, and this is a family affair, my friends. Uh, parents Julio and Amalia Palmas, along with their children, have just put so much time, energy, and passion into bringing this property back to its former glory and uh, building one of the coolest uh, winery facilities in the Napa Valley. It, it's really, really amazing. They are, uh, it's a 600 acre estate on 64 acres, or sorry, 600 acre estate, 64 acres of vineyards. And the facility is built into an 18 story uh, cavern in Mount George. It's all gravity flow. If you're ever out there, you definitely want to swing by for a visit. It is, it's really something to see. And their wines, again, are something very special and definitely worth exploring. And this particular wine is named after uh, the matriarch of the family, Amalia. And I loved it because uh, Julio was very focused on Cabernet Sauvignon. 
and making it all about the red wine, as many people are. I can't even say all guys. I know women who love Cabernet Sauvignon equally. But she liked to point out that, you know, a little white wine can be delightful. So they agreed to, uh, they named this wine after her, and I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful effort. Let's see, I'm actually going to um, do my own little tasting of this first. And it's a little different than our normal sh normal show, but again, it's a beautiful yellow, lemon yellow color. On the nose, you get beautiful notes of spice and citrus and pear and a little bit of nutmeg from the oak. It is fermented in oak, all French oak, 70% uh, new, I think, but it's such a beautifully balanced wine. So let me try a little. I always like to try the wine first, even when we're talking wine and cheese pairings, because cheese changes wine way more than the wine changes the cheese or food, I like to say. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little sip. Yeah, and that is just, Gorgeous, coats the palate. It's got a great viscosity, which is another reason why I like it paired with our brie here. Uh, but beautiful notes, again, of like of spiced pear and citrus and the, the nutmeg, uh, the baking spices imparted by the French oak that are just wonderful. And that awesome acidity that is kind of key to any great pairing. So let me go ahead and take a little bite of brie. Take another sip of our wine. Already, that's just kind of coating my palate, just like the wine, but it's the beautiful acidity in the wine that kind of cleanses the palate once the once you're kind of done with it. But oh my God, that's beautiful synergy. I really wish I could give you a sip through the, <laughs> through the screen, but I bet if some of you are sipping and savoring along with me, you probably have some brie right there. But yeah, when it comes to brie, the, the voluptuousness of the wine with the voluptuousness of the, of the cheese is just a home run. So keep those two principles in mind uh, when, you're, when you're working with brie. Yeah, you definitely, and if you wanted to do a contrasting pairing, you could do a sparkling wine, but I think with this one, just because of that rich texture, if you really wanna get that wow pairing and just kind of make people sit up and take notice, I don't think you can go wrong with a Chardonnay. And again, the, the Palmas Amalia Chardonnay is a beauty. So any questions about our first pairing? Let me check in with you all. Uh, oh yeah, Oscar, you've been there. Super modern mission control looking center, right? Yeah, it's just, it's really something so unique. They've done such a beautiful job. Yeah, and Oscar, the cardiologist who invented the heart stent, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. I think it only makes sense that he should be in the wine business, right? <laughs> absolutely. Oh, hey, Heather, great to see you. Thanks for checking in. Awesome. Made some, oh, good. You're cooking up a storm there. That's great. Yeah, Oscar, what's not to love about Brie, right? We all love it. But again, if you want to create those uh, a great pairing with it, I don't think you can go wrong with the delicious Chardonnay. Uh, oh, and Oscar says, Janet Flesher says, delicate wines for delicate cheeses. Can you expand on that philosophy? Actually, that goes to the pairing principle that I just said. You want to match weight with weight. So if you have a luscious cheese, you want a luscious wine. If you have a delicate Cheese, you definitely want a delicate wine. You don't want either one to just overwhelm the other and create a bad pairing. So I, I couldn't agree with that more. And that kind of just goes to exactly the, the first pairing principle that I was chatting about. But yeah, and, and whether you're talking wine and cheese or wine and food, you always kind of want to get the, the weights kind of matched there. All right, so I could sit here and eat this brie forever, but um, I think we should probably move things along to our next... Um, our next cheese, and again, if you have any questions throughout the show, please feel free to just chime in, enter it in the comment section, and I promise I will get it answered for you. So, cheese number two that we're gonna dive into is Conte. And this is a semi-hard cow's milk cheese from the Franche-Conte region of France. And its production actually dates back to the 12th century. Again, you have that wonderful history there to think someone was slicing a piece of this cheese back then, and here we are right now today enjoying it. I just love that. I don't know. I, I get that 
the history thing I just love to tie back to. If you are a fan of Gruyere, you're probably going to be a fan of Conte. It's essentially its French cousin. It's very similar in texture. Um, it's semi, semi hard. So it's got a supple texture. It also has a very characteristic light brownish uh, rind here. So, and, and I love to tell the story of the rinds of cheese too, because they're such an important part in making the cheese as well. And you'll notice all the ones that we have today are very, very different. So um, just something to take note of when you're um, learning about cheese or studying it because it's kind of acts as the barrier between the elements and the cheese itself. It affects how the cheese ripens and um, and we're kind of going, if you're serving cheeses or tasting them, it's nice to go from kind of a, a soft ripened cheese to a hard cheese. And uh, harder cheeses are usually, are aged longer so the moisture evaporates, which gives the cheese a firmer texture. So we're a step up here with our semi-hard Conte cheese. Again, very versatile. You can use it, gosh, on a sandwich, melted in fondue, or you know, sprinkled on anything. It has a beautiful kind of fruity, nutty texture to it. And it has notes of apricot, dried fruit that I absolutely adore too. Um, and I'm really, I'm excited about this pairing too. I am excited about all of these pairings, but uh, this one in particular, because it involves something I'm very passionate about. And I have two more pairing principles for you. Number one, people pair sparkling wines with rich, salty cheeses. I know everyone tends to go to red, but I'm here to tell you, think sparkling wine, whether you're uh, pairing it with food or cheese. Sparkling wines are some of the most food friendly wines on the planet. And I especially love this one with our cheese. So um, anyway, the acidity cuts through the richness, but the bubbles kind of diffuse the salt in the most beautiful way. It creates such a magical pairing on your palate. So, and the, the other pairing principle I want to um, tell you about is you want to pair wine and cheese with similar flavors. And I think that's really what makes this pairing so absolutely spectacular because the same notes that we find in the wine are also present in the cheese. There's a nutty kind of yeasty quality as well as that dried fruit uh, that's just exceptional. I would uh, want to feature more method traditionnel produce sparkling wines. Your Proseccos kind of won't have those same qualities, but either a champagne or any wine, any sparkling wine produced using the method traditionnel, which is the method made famous by the Champagne region of France, because those wines remain in contact with the lees. They have a beautiful nutty uh, character to it and yeasty character that just gives them like an extra dimension. That's just fantastic. So, all right, so let's jump in. I think I've teased you enough with this pairing, but um, so our featured wine for this pairing is the delightful Schramsberg Blanc de Noir sparkling wine. You can see it says Method Traditionnel right there on the label. It's a 2013 vintage. Um, and again, it's the wine is produced in California's North Coast. This is one of probably my favorite producer for domestic sparkling wines. And it is a Blanc de Noir and which was a style originated in France, uh, but Schramsberg actually pioneered this style, releasing the first American Blanc de Noir in the 1960s. And all Blanc de Noir means, doesn't have to be scary, white from black, meaning that this is a white sparkling wine made from red grapes, predominantly Pinot Noir. There's a little bit of Chardonnay thrown in there, but this white wine is predominantly made from a red grape, which is kind of the cool thing about uh, these wines as well. But it is, again, one of my favorites. And it just, again, has the same fabulous notes that the cheese has. So let me go ahead and try this beautiful sparkling wine. Whenever I'm evaluating, I get this question a lot, why aren't you drinking a sparkling wine out of a champagne glass? I always like to, uh, if I'm evaluating a sparkling wine, whether it's champagne, sparkling wine from California, always do it in a white wine glass. You get a little more headspace, you can really get a better sense of the aromas, and it, it's just more easy to evaluate the wine. You get a better sense of what it's about. So again, I'm getting that beautiful nuttiness, that kind of yeasty, citrusy quality on the nose that definitely makes me wanna go ahead and have a sip. Yeah, definitely, and it's, again, same on the palate, I'm getting the nuttiness, um, citrus, pear, again, that apricot, the dried apricot thing on the palate is like, wow. And the, the bubbles, bubbles create uh, such a different, another dimension to pairings that I think make them uh, so much more interesting. So now I'm gonna have some cheese, our Conte. 
Mm. I could eat that all day long and I might have. <laughs> You'll never know. But yeah, there's just something about the synergy between the flavors on the palate, the nuttiness, the apricot, and the bubble, the bubbles kind of diffusing that salt and the acidity kind of elevating that the richness of the cheese that's just really super heavenly. I need another, I need another palate cleansing sip. <laughs> Just fantastic. So again, that was our Schramsberg Blanc de Noir sparkling wine with Arcante uh, semi-hard cow's milk cheese, again, from France. And all again, all of our featured cheeses today are from uh, Europe. And cheesesofeurope.com is a fantastic resource for all of you. So any questions about um, any of our first two pairings? We had the Palmas Amalia Chardonnay with our delicious, luscious brie. And then we had our Schramsberg Blanc de Noir sparkling wine with our semi-hard Conte cow's milk cheese. That's also just, again, exceptional. Yeah, when you match those flavors uh, right on, it's just, just such a gorgeous synergy for sure. So, um, oh, John says, we've got Humboldt Fog. Oh, great, I love Humboldt Fog. Humboldt Fog is an amazing cheese that's made in California, but it is absolutely one of my favorites. I like how it ripens from the outside in. So delicious. Veronica has champagne and I've got a Pinot Noir Rosé. I love Sundays. Me too. And I'm so happy you could join us today, John. That's wonderful. It makes me happy thinking of you two sitting there eating some Humboldt Fog and some Bubbles and Pinot and Rosé. Wonderful. So, um, all right. Any other questions so far? about our first two. Oh, sorry. Oscar says, Sherry was paired with Conte last time I tried it. Another delicious pairing. You have the probably an Amontillado. You've got that beautiful nuttiness that also resonates with the cheese. Uh, that would be a, another fantastic pairing. And I'll put some other uh, pairing combinations in the show notes for you guys to reference for sure. Oh, and Laura says, having some Conte now. Cheers, lady. I'm so glad to hear that. Wonderful. And just, Comte, since it was from the Jura Mountains, I have a friend. Oh, you have a friend named Jura? Oh, that's so funny. Wow. That is real. I don't think I've ever met anyone with that name. Oh, and Laura, great to see you guys. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I think we're on a roll with some pretty amazing pairings so far. So let's go ahead and dive into our next pairing as I get all situated here. All right. So our next pairing... We're gonna go ahead and thank you for your questions. Again, if you think of any questions throughout the show, just pop them in, you know, up and I will check on them and get back to you, I promise. So our next cheese we're gonna feature is one you're probably familiar with, Parmigiano Reggiano. You gotta say it with the hand, it makes it so much more fun. But again, this is a hard cow's milk cheese from Italy. It's actually named after a the regions in Emilia Romagna where the cheese is made, and that's Parma and Reggio. It's uh, usually made in 80 pound wheels that are aged for at least 12 months. Again, you, they need to let that moisture evaporate to create the texture that we're so used to encountering in this cheese. Of I mean, this cheese has such a hallmark texture to it as well. Um, so again, you can always see like kind of the graininess of the cheese by looking at it. I don't know if y'all can see that. Also another important thing to look for with Parmigiano Reggiano, um, which is an authenticity thing, is the rind. Again, it's made in these giant 80 pound wheels that are cut up for sale, uh, but it should also always have this kind of, the, the rind should always look like this. It has the stamp of the cheese on it, you know, you don't want any counterfeit cheese, right? <laughs> well, and there is, I mean, gosh, nowadays between the olive oil and cheeses, you never know what you're getting. So always good to check uh, just to be sure. And you can see, I started to cut this cheese. It just, it breaks away. All you need is a, a the tip of a knife or um, a special cheese, let's see, a cheese knife, take the tip and you just, the, the chunks of it fall off so beautifully. And again, it just has that crystal crystallized kind of grainy texture that's just exceptional uh, perfect for eating uh, again on a cheese board or finishing pasta or, or anything like that um, it usually ages for yeah one to three years but 12 months is the minimum but one to three years is I think what we usually see when we're at the store but again it has just a beautiful again that nutty kind of fruity flavor that's just so so exceptional and 
a little bit of a mellow flavor too, which is I think why it's very universally appealing. Uh, so, and I'm so excited to share this pairing principle with you because again, it's one of my favorites. It's hard to pick favorites, but this really is. You know why? Because it's easy and it helps. I think when people overthink pairings or they want to host a wine and cheese party or even a dinner party, they get kind of caught up and overwhelmed by all the options. Just think of this. If it grows together, it goes together. That's it, right? You don't have to think of pairing this with a California wine or Australian wine. I have a beautiful Italian Chianti Classico Reserva that is going to pair beautifully with our Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. So again, just keep that in mind if you're ever feeling overwhelmed about wine pairings or putting some pairings together, just stick with a specific region or country. It could be different re regions in France, different regions in Italy, and feature maybe, you know, three different cheeses with three different wines. And that's the beauty, they've done the legwork for you in these regions. They've been making cheese and wine for centuries. So they've already got something great that's gonna pair with their cheeses. So just keep that in mind and it can kind of help you from getting overwhelmed. Let's so we don't want that. So our next wine that I'm going to feature paired with our Parmigiano Reggiano is the Vittoria Felsina Chianti Classico Reserva. It's a 2008 vintage, so it has a little bit of age on it. But you see the beautiful, I love that label, just how the beautiful gold lettering, but uh, a very well-respected, um, uh, winery in the in Tuscany obviously and I talked I featured some of their wines before uh, this is one of the first wineries we ever visited when we went to Italy where I fell in love with wine and uh, if you ever go you definitely you should visit and they also make olive oil so be sure to uh, stay for the olive oil tasting as well but um, Chianti unfortunately has gotten a little bit of a bad rap over the decades, but I'm happy to report they're producing just exceptional wines now. It's really hard to get a bad Chianti. I mean, unless you're buying one in the in the bottle with the basket on the bottom, don't do that. <laughs> go to your wine store, ask for the, you know, ask them for some great recommendations. Again, you can't go wrong with Felsina, but there's many other great producers as well. And I say Chianti, going with the Reserva is worth the little bump in price. Um, Reserva wines are aged for 24 months. So it just has a little bit more complexity to it. And the important thing I think about these wines that makes it such a great pairing for the cheese is um, in Tuscany, Sangiovese San is the dominant grape. And Sangiovese produces wines that are so incredibly food friendly. They have beautiful acidity, tannins that aren't too profound. They're, it, they're, produces beautifully balanced wines. This wine is 100% Sangiovese. And if you watch during Italian Wine Month, which I think was two months ago, the one thing I kept driving home to everyone in every episode, regardless of what region we were in, was Italian wines are meant to be enjoyed with food. Because you can have a sip of an Italian wine and on its own, it might not, especially to us Americans who are used to more fruit forward wines, uh, these wines can be a bit earthy. They can have uh, some acidity to them we might not be used to. But once you introduce food into the mix, these wines are transformed and they create some of the most amazing pairings you can ever encounter. So I'm gonna go ahead and taste our delicious 2008 Felsina Chianti Classico Reserva. Again, on the nose, I'm getting beautiful earthy Earthy cherry, um, plum, a little bit of tobacco, but not too much. It's, gosh, I definitely want to go ahead and have a sip. Yeah, and just, again, the acid has softened, but it's still there. Some beautifully balanced tannins. And again, those notes, gosh, just got tobacco and earth and a little bit of black pepper and plum and blackberry and cherry, kind of that trio that... It's just softened, but again, the earth, oh, it's just delicious. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna take a bite of cheese now with it. Mm. I mean, you just need to keep a wedge of Parmigiano Reggiano in your fridge and just go in there and anytime you're hungry, take some chunks out. Oh, there's nothing, nothing better. And that's just exceptional. Again, it's got that mouthfeel, the kind of graininess that's just heavenly. And it melds so beautifully. Again, the acid and tannin in the wine just meld with the cheese and create just deliciousness. What else can I say? That's exceptional. So again, folks, if it grows together, it goes together. Great pairing principle to keep in mind.
Mm. Man, that's good. Um, any questions about our pairing of the Parmigiano Reggiano with our Felsina Chianti Classico Reserva? While I take another sip. Mm. I think this this is, yeah, this is my favorite episode so far, I have to say. <laughs> um, all right, so let me check in, see what's going on here. Um, oh, Oscar, you're asking really good questions. Oscar says young wines to young cheese. Sometimes, uh, yes, I, uh, that's, that's a pretty good rule to follow actually, because, um, yeah, if you have an older wine, you don't want to, uh, um, serve it with a fresh soft ripened cheese. You kind of want to do stick like with like, that's actually a good, good way, good way to go. Actually. I like that. You don't want to serve something that's too, a wine that's too bright and tannic with a cheese that's too aged or anything like that. And you don't want to, yeah. That's a good good rule to follow. And again, folks, these are all guidelines or pairing principles. You have to tailor them to your own palate, you know, depending on your tastes and what you like. I mean, these are just, again, some examples. So, you know, next weekend, invite some friends over, have them bring, each bring a wine and cheese that they enjoy paired together and learn a little something. The only way to know what you like is to taste, taste, taste. I'm your guide. But again, if you like more contrasting pairings and I like more, you know, pairing like with like pairings, then that's, neither one of us is wrong. So I like to say everyone's palate is different, but no one's is wrong. And your only, your only job in this is to figure out what you like. So, but great insights, Oscar. I love everything you've said so far. So uh, keep it coming, keep it coming. Um, let me see. Too many think it's only, I know you're right. Oscar says too many think this is only a grating cheese. Yeah. You need to go get a big hunk. Just keep it in the fridge and use that knife or just the tip of a, of a, or tip of a knife and break off chunks and snack on it. It, oh, it's heavenly. Just really, really good. And Oscar says, have you ever invested in Parmigiano Reggiano? I hear it can be invested in as a futures commodity like pork bellies and citrus. Didn't know that. And I never have, but definitely something to look into. Because I know between my husband and I, we could drive that up or down depending on our own consumption. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, Monica, stay away from the Chianti with the basket on the bottom. That, now, that's that's kind of a hard and fast rule. <laughs> There's really no wavering on that, I have to say. But, um, yeah, I mean, they're nostalgic, I think. I mean, I remember, I remember my parents uh, having those bottles. Um, but anyway, fun stuff for sure. Oh, Oscar has another question. How about a fig or date drizzle on your cheese? Are you a fan? And honey, yes, I absolutely am fans. That's one thing I'm going to include in the show notes, some recommended, um, accoutrement or pairings for these cheeses, because I absolutely agree with you hundred percent that these things can even enhance the pairing even further. I just wanted to kind of feature the basic cheese and wine here, but Absolutely, there are, um, you know, dried fruit, Marcona almonds, like the Marcona almonds with the Conte and the Schramsberg Blanc de Noir would have just synergized that pairing even further. So there's absolutely, um, you know, sides or accompaniments that you can add to these uh, pairings that are just going to make it even better. And I will have those uh, listed in the show notes, but for sure. Um, yeah, there's so many, a drizzle of balsamic on the Parmigiano Reggiano. Absolutely. And yeah, honey, um, I actually will get, wait till we get to the last one to bring in the honey, but, and again, have fun with it. Taste, you know, whatever you like, get a couple different things and, um, and again, see what you prefer, but I'm happy to share some classics with you and what I like, of course. So, but great questions. I appreciate all of your insight, but yeah, dried fruit and figs, especially, are such a great um, pairing, especially for hard cheeses, for sure. But um, mm, I know, just making me more hungry. I didn't think that was possible. All right, so that was our Parmigiano Reggiano with our Felsina Chianti Classico Reserva. Sorry, I had to. Um, and okay, we're gonna move on to our next pairing. And I do have a bonus one for you today. We're not stopping at four. I had to, I just could not not include this last one. You'll, I think you'll understand when you see it. So, so our next cheese that we're, oh, I'm excited about this one too. So the next featured cheese that we're going to enjoy is the Mimolette. You can see it, and I put this with no adornment 
usually I I, and I will include a picture of that as well in the show notes I love to make a beautiful cheese platter I wanted you to see kind of the contrast of the cheeses against the white background to really get a sense of what they're about because this Mimolet is stunning the color is just it pops it is the most beautiful orange orange color you've ever seen. It's a hard cow's milk cheese actually from the Pas de Calais region of France. And as I was telling you earlier about how important the rind can be for the production of the cheese, this one has a really super cool rind and I think you can see that. It actually looks like cork to me and there's little holes in it that facilitate airflow which actually um, influence the aging and the flavor of the cheese. Uh, there's actually little mites that are used to do that but You'll never see them and they're gone, but they don't touch the cheese. It's just the rind thing. But again, centuries of tradition. This is how you create this cheese. And I think once you taste this cheese, it speaks for itself. It's just so exceptional. It's very, um, it's got beautiful notes of, um, let's see, it's kind of nutty and fruity, but it has a butterscotch note and a finish on it that not many cheeses have. I think that's one of the things that makes Mimolette so um, interesting. Um, and it comes in a variety of ages too. The younger the cheese, the softer it will be, and the older it is, it takes on uh, um, a texture kind of similar to Parmigiano Reggiano. It almost crystallizes a bit, um, but mine is somewhere in the middle. It still has that just exceptional flavor. And um, yeah, and it has almost a sharp flavor like a cheddar, like you would expect uh, a cheddar cheese to have too. But I think it's that butterscotch thing that just gets you and on the website one of the the secret de fromage number 57 melt some butter and mimolette for a grilled cheese you'll never forget i that's the my first order of business when the show is over i'm going to slice this and make i think a grilled cheese <laughs> to pair with my wine but anyway okay so uh the pairing principle that i would like to um illustrate with this cheese and our next featured wine is pair red wine with hard cheeses I think this is where red wines really shine. You pair them with hard cheeses and they just, um, again, there's something about the texture and the way um, they interact together that's just absolutely ex exceptional. Hold on one second. Yeah, it, it's, you don't wanna pair red wines with, with your Brie or even your Conte. I don't think that is going to do either a great service. There's something about the way that the tannin and acid in the wine can stand up to the aged, more flavorful, uh, salty cheese. It's something magic happens, but I think you're safe in, in sticking with that kind of as a generality. And you can tweak the flavors depending on which wines you like but and cheeses, but um, I especially love this wine paired with a rustic red and to pair with this, I have the Bodegas Muga Rioja Reserva, unfiltered friends, meaning that they did not filter it to, um, to kind of preserve more of the nuance and terroir of the wine. But again, one of my favorites and Rioja, Spain in general is such an amazing region to look to for value wines and the quality is just exceptional. Uh, Rioja especially, but there's there's other wonderful regions to look to. And um, in Rioja, the Tempranillo grape is, is the signature grape of the region. Also very food friendly, but produces beautiful notes with, um, beautiful wines with notes of uh, uh, red and dark fruit and a little bit of leather and tobacco and are just, again, produces beautiful wines. This wine, 70% Tempranillo, 20% Garnacha, 7% Mazuelo, and 3% Graciano, aged for 24 months in American oak. You'll almost always find uh, the Tempranillo grape in Spain aged in American oak. It just has a great affinity and produces for the wine and the grape and produces beautiful wines. So let me go ahead and go into a smell of this wine. Oh my God, that's just exceptional. Um, Beautiful red fruit. I'm getting more pomegranate and cherry in this wine, but definitely that earthiness and um, a little bit of spice and chocolate too. Wow, that's a really wonderful pairing. And again, it's a 2011, so it has a little bit of age on it, but did I show you the label of this? Hold on, I don't think that I did. Is the Bodegas Muga 2011 Rioja Reserva. And um, Reserva meaning it's aged for 24 months. Um, at least. So again, let me roll into my tasting of this delightful wine. Is anyone out there listening a fan of Spanish wine already? And if you are, 
what would that be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on the palette, again, beautiful notes of red fruit. Um, I'm getting a little bit more plum on the palette. And again, that little bit of chocolate and spice and earthiness is just delicious as well. These wines are unique, but if you're a fan of reds, you definitely need to uh, explore the wines of Rioja. They are exceptional. So, all right, now I'm gonna go ahead and try our featured cheese with this pair, for this pairing, our Mimolette. Mm -hmm. My tasting dance. Yeah, and again, just the, the tannin and acid of the wine and how it just plays into the texture of the cheese and the nuttiness. Um, it's just exceptional. I could sip, sip and savor that all day long too. <laughs> but I have to try to hide this from Steve before he comes home. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah. So next time you have a beautiful red wine and you're looking for a cheese to pair with it, reach for a hard cheese. You don't want to go with something too soft or creamy. Definitely reach for something with some age on it that's going to be able to stand up to the um, tannins and acid and flavors in your red wine. And I think that's a beautiful one, our Mimolette with our Rioja. So any questions about this pairing so far? Let me check in and see what y'all are up to. Oh, Deb has had the Muga. Yeah, it's such a great producer. You can't go wrong. Always great quality. And, um, and did I say Mimo was French? Mimolette, yes, it is a French cheese, absolutely. In fact, all of our cheeses tonight are French with the exception of our Parmigiano Reggiano. Yes, and Oscar's, it looks like pumpkin pie. It does, like that color is just, it's a showstopper. It's gorgeous. And I love the contrast with the rind. It's very dramatic. <laughs> oh, Monica loves Mimolette. Great, I'm so glad to hear that. A lot of people, hadn't heard of it. I, I think it needs to get a little more love and it's so it's so deserving of it. It's very delicious. All right, let me make sure I'm not missing any questions. And again, if you think of anything later, come back, leave a comment. I promise to get back to you. Um, let's see. Oh, and Oscar. Okay. I think I've answered all questions so far. Oh, Heather says, so do you pick the wines or the cheeses first and then pair? That depends. For this, I pick the cheeses first and then I picked wines to pair with. It just depends on which you're looking to highlight more. Um, but yeah, for this one, for this one, the cheeses came first and then had the fun of, um, of trying to pick the wines to pair with. But again, it just depends on whatever your goal is or, or if you wanna feature the cheeses or wines more. But yeah, it's it, totally up to you. But I do always like to try the wine first before I introduce cheese or food. Just because of that, it changes so, so much. But let's see. Okay. All right. We're humming right along. Oh, and uh, Laura says, Mimolette is one of Harry's faves. The Mimolette or the wine? I'm thinking the Mimolette, but I could be wrong. But yeah, Bodega Muga, Bodegas Muga, you can't, can't go wrong with their wines. They're just delicious. And just authentic and, and so well-crafted. So, all right. Now, I can't believe our show is almost coming to an end. Um, let me just scoot that down there. Okay. So now for our final pairing, our bonus pairing of today's tasting is, um, and yeah, I had to feature this one. So our featured cheese for this one is the Saint Agur. And I don't know if you can, it's one of the ones that is actually standing out on the palette. It is the blue cheese right here. You can see it's a cow's milk blue cheese originally from Auvergne, France, and it is molded and salted and then aged for about two to three months. It's a creamy cheese and uh, most blue cheese is in, injected with a, a mold that creates these beautiful striations of color. And again, it's different depending on which blue cheese um, that you're talking about. And I'd like to encourage you, if you're someone who has kind of blanketly said, I don't like blue cheese, you need to reconsider because there is such a spectrum of blue cheese. And I would encourage you to try this one because it is one of the most more mild, creamy blue cheeses out there. And I think it is a great introduction uh, to blue cheese. It almost has the texture of um, brie, I would say, of our cheeses we have today, but it's almost, it's creamier. And, and then the flavor is just exceptional. It's, um, yeah, it's hard not to like this cheese. So check it out, it's Saint Agur. Um, and again, you could have it on its own, on crackers, use it in salads, even on a, a burger. 
I bet it would be heavenly. Like a blue cheese bacon burger or something like that. Good Lord. Um, so the pairing principle, I'm even more excited about the pairing principle and to get the wine involved in this, is something people don't often think to do, but the payoff is, is so worth exploring. So um, pairing principle is pair wine and cheese with opposite flavors. Now we talked about pairing like with like. This is a case of pairing opposite and if you're a fit, someone like me who adores pairing sweet and salty together, any kettle corn fans out there, this pairing is just going to uh, blow your mind. It is so, so exceptional. So I have chosen to pair this, one, this uh, cheese with a sweet wine. And what better place to go for a sweet wine than Bordeaux, and by that I mean Sauterne. And I'm going to show you our final wine of the tasting is the Chateau Guiro. Sauterne 2011 vintage, um, hailing from the Sauterne region of Bordeaux. Uh, Sauterne is heaven in a bottle, essentially. Actually, it's um, in addition to the grapes, and this one is a blend of predominantly Semillon with some Sauvignon Blanc um, mixed in, blended in for good measure, but What's key to the production of this wine is actually a mold, Botrytis cinerea, known as noble rot, which affects the grapes as they're in the vineyard. And it molds onto the grapes and it shrivels them. And the grapes, they look horrid when they're in the vineyard, but what they do is they create a wine with great complexity of flavor, with great viscosity. There's nothing like a Sauterne, and I thought it would be the perfect pairing for our St. Agur blue cheese. And um, this wine is $40 for the half bottle. So, it, I mean, these wines can get very expensive. I think this is a great value as far as Sauterne is concerned. But um, again, this is home to some of the most heavenly sweet wines on the planet. And if you're not familiar with these wines, they're worth checking out, I guarantee. So, um, so all right, let me go ahead and dive into our wine. And yeah, on the, on the nose, the characteristic nose of Sauterne honey, lychee, orange blossom, spiced pear. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And on the palate, again, you have that viscosity that's just exceptional. It coats the palate with those same flavors, the citrus, the spiced pear, and the, the lychee, and the sweetness. That's just really exceptional. So now I'm going to take a bite of our St. Agur cheese, blue cheese. And again, folks, you have to try this. Promise me you'll try that this week because that is something you should not miss. Again, and the, and the creaminess of the cheese mirrors, and there's a couple different principles going on in all these. Like this is very similar to pairing the weights of the wine and the cheese because you have the, the viscosity of the wine mirrors the creaminess of the cheese so beautifully. But again, it's the opposite. It's the sweet and the salty that made this the perfect pairing to end our tasting on, I think. but. Um, but yeah, so that is just another exceptional one. Think of toy around with pairing cheeses and wines with opposite flavors. So, um, any questions about, uh, anything so far? <laughs> As I take another sip, sorry, I couldn't resist. And that cheese is just exceptional. Exceptional. Let's see. Uh, Oscar says, no way. Can't make that promise. Why? You got to try it. Don't knock it till you've tried it. That's, and that's what I say, you know, if you try a wine, someone emailed me about a wine and they're like, you know what? I'm not really a big fan of this wine and that's okay. As long as you've tried it and you can say, I'm not, not liking it based on what a critic said or a friend said, I've tried this for myself. And I know you probably have Oscar. You're so good about that, but, um, always try it for yourself before you're, you give the final word that you're not a fan of a certain pairing. So just saying, I know you, um, you and Fran enjoy the blue, I will stick to the wine. And that's fine, that just means more cheese for us gals. So we'll, we'll go with that. So, and Laura says, seems that most people love or hate the blues, no in between. We love the blues. I'm so glad to hear that. And honestly, and for someone who wasn't the biggest blue cheese fan, I would highly uh, recommend the Saint Agur. It is, again, it's creamy. It's not as concentrated as, you know, your, your more firmer blue cheeses, like your Stilton, which have a much more um, pungent, 
and saltier character. This one is more mild and it's it's very user friendly. And again, is just such a delightful pairing with um, with the wine as well. Oh, and John Linton says, "Wow, oops, Giro, nothing sweet open, but the German Cambozola we have is close to your French blue. Perfect." Great choice too. And you know, with a firmer blue cheese, you can do like a, a port and Stilton is a great pairing. That's another great pairing too. But again, I mean, that's still a sweet with um, a salty. So again, explore, have fun, stick with things you already like, stick with your favorite cheese. If your favorite cheese is brie, go out and try the Chardonnay with it. See if you like it. And that might inspire you to even, you know, try more pairings or, you know, branch out. And discover what you like again that's what it's all about I'm not here to tell you what you should like but just to kind of guide you and I think a great place to start would be with any of these cheeses because they are all truly exceptional so any other questions let's see okay as I have another sip of our delicious gyro sauterne <laughs> I think I hear the neighbors trying to knock the door down to get <laughs> Oh, but anyway, let's see. All right, so I think we have done a very nice representation of cheeses. We featured our Brie with the Palmaz Chardonnay. We've done our Conte with the Schramsberg Blanc de Noir sparkling wine. We featured our Parmigiano Reggiano with our Felsina Chianti Classico Reserva. We did our beautiful Mimolette with the uh, Bodegas Muga Rioja Reserva. And then we finished with our Saint Agur blue cheese, creamy blue cheese, with our uh, Chateau Guiro uh, Sauterne from Bordeaux. So I think we've got a really nice lineup for you. I hope that we've, we've inspired you today to um, have some fun with wine and cheese. Um, uh, as a great resource. I will be including the show notes on my website and I will post it on my Facebook page as soon as I do. For future reference, cheesesofeurope.com is an exceptional resource. Not only do they have all the information on these che these cheeses and so much more, they have great recipes for you to try. I know a lot of you who watch love to cook at home, so you can definitely have some fun with that. And, um, and yeah, so definitely feel free to go there. I will include that link in the show notes as well. And um, thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate you turning, tuning in. I hope you have continue to have a wonderful weekend. And since next Sunday is Father's Day, um, I won't be with you next Sunday. I'll be back Sunday, June 24th for another fabulous episode. But for those of you who are local, and actually I will be posting the video on Facebook as well, I'll be doing a WPTV uh, television appearance this coming Thursday on Father's Day, wine-related gift ideas, and also a super fun signature cocktail that I think you're going to want to enjoy all summer long. Um, it's done in recipe uh, coming up with the recipe now, but it's going to be delicious. So tune in next Thursday. I'll also post that here on my Facebook page, but um, I look forward to, I'm here if you need me between now and then, but we'll be back right Sunday, June 24th with another show. Thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy Father's Day to those of you who will be celebrating that. And, um, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thanks so much. Cheers.